A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another project video. Quick project video, relatively. Uh, so, uh, you guys might have seen me uh, repairing this, um, what is this model? A Sony Discman D15, which is a really nice player, uh, but I need a way of powering it. Um, it can be powered off of a uh, wall outlet, and while that's fine for for in general, for using it, I prefer to have this battery powered so I could actually, um, you know, not have to worry about plugging in. This uh, connector here is getting a little crusty, and if you jiggle it just a tiny little bit, it'll uh, shut itself off, and it's really irritating. So I just want a modern battery solution. Now, it uses a funky battery that um, you can't get them new anymore, obviously. It's um, proprietary to these units. There are new old stock and used batteries you can get, but because of the age of this, I believe this came out uh, sometime in the 80s, uh, all those batteries are pretty much guaranteed dead or barely able to hold a charge. So I'd want something modern that can replace here that's just a drop-in replacement. So I uh, three modeled uh, these guys, uh, little plastic lids uh, taken from uh, measurements on here. I don't have an original battery to reference, uh, but just taking some calipers to this inside space was enough to get something that would at least kind of fit. And you can see here, uh, this is the first revision. It's a little tight in the back, but it actually like fits perfectly, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, but um, there's a couple things wrong with this. Um, the lid I had to inset um, takes up a little bit of room. It fits like perfectly. I love that. Just kind of like clips on there. Um, but... Um, I had a little part for a uh, lithium-ion USB charger uh, board that you can buy um, set in here, and the height wasn't quite right for the actual port, and you know it was a little bit finicky. So I uh, modeled the second version, and this one I had a little bit of a cutout on the inner part here, so that the part that clicks in is just a thin little, uh, you know, surround so that you can fit a little bit thicker of a battery in there. So this battery is actually from a um, an iPod video, <clears throat> and it's an old old battery that I uh, didn't really need anymore, so I just kind of took it apart. And um, you can see the circuit just slides right in there. Um, the USB port is right on the outside, and uh, the LEDs I actually had to rewire um, using 30-gauge wire um, to put them right here. So I actually uh, modeled a tiny little hole and you can see that in here, I stick a bit of clear filament in, and then I used a lighter to melt the ends and then a piece of metal to uh, force it flat. So that's sort of like a light pipe now. And on the other end, I didn't really change anything, but I found that I actually do need to. Uh, when I insert this into the, um, the bay here, you can see, number one, this is too loose in the second version. I overcompensated too much. Um, so rather undercompensated. So I'm going to have to increase this length just a tiny bit. And um, the board, I just cut out a, uh, like a capacitor, a surface mount capacitor board, and try to wire it there to see if it would fit. And it actually sits too far back, so I'm going to actually have to um, kind of push it forward, cut some of the plastic, remove it uh, to make this thinner so that the board is uh, closer to these pins. Um, they are pretty long, but... Um, they're not that long, so I'm going to have to do that. That'll be in the, um, actually, you guys won't have to wait. It'll be in a couple minutes. I'll show you my uh, next version of this. But what I wanted to show you was uh, JLC, um, the sponsor of this video, has provided me PCBs I uh, designed for the actual uh, contacts. And um, you can see them right here. I'll grab one of them. I actually designed this using the same thing that I tried with the, uh, the Word clock uh, PCB which is where you just like snap them off and let's see yeah you'd see tiny little holes in there this came out really well so you just you know take one of these and just give it a snap so like this one for instance oh that was that was beautiful 
Okay, yeah. Gonna have to sand it down a little bit on the top. It's kind of sharp. But you can see, and I'll use this one for example, that um, it just sits in here and has gold-plated uh, gold contacts, so it's not going to tarnish that easily. And, uh, wow, that actually came out really well. And uh, it'll just sit in here. It has points that you can solder to, to the back. Just get a quick zoom in there. Uh, you can see, obviously, battery plus and minus. I put a spot for a diode. <clears throat> so the issue is, if you have this in the circuit, obviously, if you charge it externally via USB, there's no problem at all. However, the battery is directly um, in parallel with the contacts. So the voltage from the battery goes straight into these pins, which is as desired. If you were to plug this into a wall outlet while the battery is inside, uh, the, um, I believe this is, was it nickel metal hydride or NICAD? Uh, that charging, trickle charging circuit will try to charge this battery. Uh, which is fine if the battery is dead, but I don't think it really has any kind of like overcurrent or um, like over voltage protection or anything for the battery. So it could actually swell this battery. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, I added the ability to put a diode in there so that current can't flow into the battery, it can only flow into the unit. The problem with that is um, there's going to be a voltage drop in that case. So I would need some kind of like shocky diode. Um, with a or a germanium diode with a very low um, forward voltage drop. Uh, other than that, if if you want to forego it, I actually included a trace to shun it. So if you want to include a diode, you have to cut the trace and then solder a diode. But if not, then um, you could just ignore it and just never plug it in with the battery inserted, uh, just for safety. Uh, which is probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to predominantly use this as a uh, battery unit. I'm not going to leave it plugged into a wall. So yeah, you can see there, very nicely done. I really like how these came out. And they're pretty tiny too. I was going to originally have just each one separate, but um, it just sort of made sense to have four of them in stacks of four, and then you just snap off whatever you need. And um, yeah, this is a five pack of them. So this is pretty much, you know, I'm not going to make that many batteries. So I'm probably going to just make like two or three for myself and if anyone else wants them um i could throw together a few more but yeah um so on to designing a new case uh, to accommodate this board and um we'll get on it and hopefully it'll uh fit and all work in this um disc man okay and we are back so um this is the third iteration of the battery and there are a few improvements I can make. For a one-off, this is good enough for me. Uh, so I moved the, um, the circuit board sideways. And the old one, you can see it was vertical. And that ended up um, pushing the battery up a little bit too much. So I would have had to kind of sacrifice and use a smaller battery for it to all fit. Uh, so I just decided, uh, screw it, I'll put it sideways. And um, I kind of botched the hole. It should actually be further uh, to the right. It was a little too close to the wall, but I just used a file to extend the hole so that it fit. Uh, that all fits. Um, the light pipe I left in the same place, but actually if I were to do this again, I would probably um, stick the light pipe on the top facing down uh, where the LEDs originally are so I don't have to rewire them because this is going to be tedious. If, if I were to make these to actually sell, I wouldn't want to wire these tiny little LEDs uh, with magnet wire, 30 gauge wire, um, just to make it look nicer. Uh, so I would just put a little hole in the top case here and uh, use some clear filament pointing straight down uh, to where the LEDs are right in this corner here. So that's probably what I would do. Um, but as for this prototype, good enough for me. Uh, other than that, I just kind of hot glued the, uh, th that tiny little board in, uh, these guys. And um, I omitted the diode. I'm only ever going to use this battery in this unit when it's not plugged into the wall, so I'm fine with that. And um, yeah, everything is pretty good. I haven't glued it together yet. I'm going to give it a good test before I do. Um, actually, I might not even glue it together. I might use a uh, sticker label and wrap it around so I could at least open it if I ever need to. Anyway, charging. Um just like any other USB device, 
uh, just glows orange when it's charging and it turns green when it's uh, done. So easy peasy. As for the fit, I increased the length just a bit and uh, it's it's pretty much, it's a little bit tight, um, but I would say if I decreased the uh, tolerance by, you know, half a mil or something like that, it'd be perfect. Anyway, it fits right in pretty snugly and I can turn it on full battery and it works. It's spinning up. So there you go. So I would call this a success. So anyway, um, yeah, if you guys are interested, if you have your own disc men and you want to, uh, to make your own batteries, this is definitely a viable way of going about it. I'll uh, put the files for the 3D printed case up once I fix these little issues with the holes and whatnot. And um, I'll put the board files up as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to make a few more of these for myself. So yeah, if you guys are interested, I'll, um, I'll make a hackaday.io page with the, um, the design files and everything and the information up on there. So if you wanted to make your own batteries, you'd be able to. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to give a huge shout out to uh, JLCPCB for uh, providing these. These actually, if, if I had the um, HASL coating, the hassle coating, which is just uh, leaded solder, it would have been pretty cheap. Uh, these ended up costing, I think, like 15 bucks or something for um, essentially 20 of these boards uh, because I opted for the gold coating, and that's going to increase price quite a bit. But as you can see, um, it's, it's scratching a little bit, actually. Uh, but uh, this should at least last to uh, corrosion and whatnot. I try to recess as much as I could to prevent you from accidentally shorting them or anything like that. Uh, but still, it's something that you got to be careful about. But yeah, um, I wanted the gold just for better conductivity. Anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And um, this is definitely a valid approach if you have old devices that uh, the batteries no longer are, you know, you can't buy them anymore or anything. You can definitely go ahead, design your own, uh, just take some calipers and either me measure the original battery or measure the, uh, the area within the case of the device. And yeah take a um, like an old iPod battery or whatever they sell replacement ones dirt cheap and yeah throw it together use uh, one of these lipo charger boards uh, USB chargers you can buy off eBay I think for like you can get like a dollar each actually I think less like 77 cents or something like each or you can get like a five pack for like two or three bucks which is absolutely insane and yeah just uh, design some way of actually connecting the battery in this case I used a, a custom PCB and you're good to go and this will just slot right in works perfect so I'm gonna actually <laughs> go and uh, listen to a, a lot of CDs and uh, see how long this battery gets this battery is a um, 800 milliamp hour and if I were to look at one of the original batteries, a uh, viewer had sent me a unit to repair, and this is the battery from that. Uh, you can see, I believe it said somewhere on here that it's like 600, 400 or 600 milliamp hour, 4 volt battery. There we go. Oh, it's only 550. That's barely anything nominal four volts that's why lipos work so well in this is because the nominal voltage in a lipo is like 3.7 uh, up to 4.2 volts so it's like right in the same range yeah you can see right here my battery is actually a little bit thinner uh same length rough actually mine's a little just a hair longer and uh the width is pretty much spot on maybe a little bit thinner yeah, you can see it's a lot lighter, actually, and it has a higher capacity. Um, not quite double, but like 1.6 times or something like that. But yeah, you can see. Wow, that's pretty cool. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have an old Discman or an old player that uh, needs a, a fresh new battery, this is a way to go about it. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.